the thought process that you guys should be thinking about when you're coming up with your biohacks. Okay, because all of you were talking about different things that you wanted to work on, and that's fantastic. You know, and most people, this is the process that they do. It's the same thing that I did. I go, oh, there's a problem that I've got, and now I'm going to go try a bunch of different things and see if it works. And if I feel better, that means it's good. If I don't feel good, then that means it's bad. But as you start going through, you start hearing people say, well, there's a thing called a detox effect. Oh, you feel bad for a little bit, but then you get better. Or, yeah, you're feeling really good, but then you're destroying yourself on the back end. You know, what do you think about that? So rather than what most people do is basically just start throwing darts against the wall, I wanted to give you guys a little bit of a, of a primer or an overview of the thinking processes that you should actually have when you're going through these biohacks. So, Title is How to Buy Hockey Way to Higher Performance. And first, safe harbor. Um, none, none of this is any type of recommendations for health or repairing of any diseases. Nothing here has been uh, specified by the FDA that's supposed to work, and we don't diagnose anything, okay? So what is biohacking? First, it's the art and science of optimizing, okay? It's about using systems thinking, not just looking at one specific thing that you want to fix, but understanding that because of you and who you are as an organism, that one thing is connected to many other parts of your body and they're all interconnected. It's also about self-knowledge through numbers in order to circumvent the limitations of that system. So you get that instant feedback to realize whether or not something you're doing is working or not. And then also develop individualized methods for your performance. Right. Basically, what all this means is that you are voiding your warranty, okay? So there's a good chance that you could break something by you trying all these things. So let's all understand that as well. Because yeah, you're scientists, that's basically what happens. You learn just as much through science and your failures as much as you do your successes. So we have to understand that because this is what we're doing. We're citizen scientists. So what is systems thinking? It's trying to understand the system that you're trying to have. And it's knowing the rules better so that you can hack better. So what type of things do you want to buy hack? And we heard a bunch of people talking about it, a bunch of different things, and we use all the different people. But for most of these, it's what you're trying to do is there's a deficiency that you're trying to get back. Okay, it's kind of like that bucket over there, there's holes that you're trying to plug up in that bucket because you're losing energy. Okay. So now the way I talk about biology and biohacking for performance. I, the people who I talk to mainly are executives, business people, entrepreneurs. So the analogy that I needed to work out for them is something that they can easily relate to, and for me that was money, okay, and finances. So if you guys understand a little bit about money, maybe you'll, you'll follow along pretty well, but if you have any questions, feel free to ask. So this is the formula that is used for wealth, okay? Revenue minus expenses equals profit. Basic, right? And then profit times time equals wealth. Everybody agree with me so far? All right. So let's look a little bit deeper about how businesses actually work. If you look at most businesses, let's say you have a company that has a million dollars in revenue. Okay? That's not bad. But they have expenses, about seven hundred fifty thousand dollars in expenses that they're spending every year. That means that they've got a profit of about $250,000. That's not bad. I mean, I'm pretty comfortable if I was making that much. Not too bad. So what happens, though, if you've got a company that now they made some mistakes and they're spending nine fifty? dollars Now they're at $50,000 profit. Not happy, okay? So what most people will do at this point in order to solve that deficit is we're, I'm in panic mode. I'm going to try to do anything that I can to make more money. But does this make sense? Because when you're doing that, yeah, your profit's back up to 250, but you ask any business expert that's out there, trying to just make more money when your system is broken is not a sustainable way to run your business. So what the intelligent people do instead is they figure out ways to lower the expenses that they have in their business. Now you are making more money than just making than just trying to earn more sales. All right. So now we've had you've seen many people, but many businesses though that you know they're making some money, but 
their expenses are even higher than the amount of money that they're making, yet they're able to stay in business. How is it that they're able to do this? Well, they, so this company's got a $200,000 loss, and that loss is really, really important, especially to investors, because investors, they want to know what the burn rate for that company is. How much money are they losing every month, all right? Well, if a company's got a million dollars in cash, that's not too bad because now they can stay in business for about five years. For about five years, you can make some good mistakes and still be in business and figure out what's going on and turn it around, all right? But like most businesses that if all of a sudden they get a million dollars of cash in their first round of investing, what do they do? They start growing it. Big parties, doing all these fun stuff. Everybody got, has to get their swag, all right? And now you've got a million dollars in expenses. Your burn rate is now $600,000, and your business gets closed in 18 months. We see it time and time again, it's constantly happening all over, all over the US, all right? So these are all numbers, numbers that you need to know in your business, and you have to understand it, otherwise you cannot be in business, all right? Could you run your business without seeing your numbers? Anybody in here, could anybody in here run their business without seeing their numbers? Okay, good. So let's look at now the biological for, uh, formula for biological wealth. All right, so now energy minus inflammation equals performance. I heard a lot of people talking about a lot of different biohacks that they wanted to do. Pretty much all of them dealt with reduction of inflammation, which is great. That's something you want to do. But if you're not making enough energy, at the same time, you've got problems. But we see most people doing the other way though. All they think about is what can I do to get more energy without thinking about, that's, that's pretty much everybody else out there. You guys at least are trying to figure out how to reduce inflammation, which is great. But most of the people that are out there, what do they try to do? What do they need to do to just get more energy without trying to fix any of the problems that they've got on the, on the side? And then, and this is the other change, performance times time well, or in your case, it would be longevity, okay? So what is the currency? Because for businesses, what do we deal with? Money, that's what we want. The more money I can make, that's great. But what's the money for the body? For the, mon for the body, it's energy, and specifically, it's electrons. If you ask any of the scientists that are out there, what is every single piece of matter made out of? Protons, electrons, and neutrons. Electrons, though, are the things that make life happen. The more electrons you have, the more you're able to do. So for us, electrons equals money. All right, so now, these next slides are gonna pretty, well, hopefully will make a lot of sense. I'm gonna try to run through them pretty quickly. So energy production minus biological cost and inflammation equals your performance. If you have a normal amount of energy, right, if you have a normal amount of energy, but you've got high levels of inflammation, that means you have low performance. Most people, what do they do once again? They try to increase their energy without reducing their inflammation, and that their performance is now unsustainable. Who's ever had a diet that didn't work, even though they tried it so hard? Who's ever tried doing any type of therapy to repair a knee, but yet it falls again, or something else starts happening when you start taking a, sim a, a drug or something like that, try to repair one thing and something else breaks. Okay? That's what happens there. But instead of, if you work on lowering your inflammation, you now have optimal performance if you're able to do both. And then finally now, let's take a look at this part. So energy, but you, we also know some people that they're really sick. They can't get out of bed, they're obese, they have cancer, yet these people are able to live. How is it that they're able to live? Well, they've got reduced function and they've got cellular damage going on, but they've got a vital reserve. That's that genetic inheritance. That's that investment that you got from your parents that allows you to survive and live. Those your telomeres, your stem cells, and your ability to actually hold on to electrical charge. So if all that is working, 
this person could live for about 85 years. Not too bad. But most people, once again, when you see them that, hey, I was partying in college and I was able to drink all this stuff and stay up late and eat all this junk food, and I still look great. 35 years old, 40 years old, I still look fantastic. I must be able to do everything just the same way forever. But, so their inflammation goes up. So now they have chronic inflammation. But once they hit about 45 or so, what happens? They hit the wall. Now they don't have reduced function. They have loss of function. And that same telomeres, those same stem cells that were lasting you for 85 years, now only last 45. And we're constantly seeing this again and again. We have more people dying younger now than previous generations because of the altered environment that we live in today. So it's not just about how much you make, it's about how much you keep, both in finances and in biology. So let's talk a little bit more about this system that you guys are trying to biohack. Because okay, we, we said that we have to understand the system if you want to hack it. So let me ask you this. What's that organ inside your skull that controls your entire body? What's it called? Huh? Brain. Brain, right. Okay. I ask my, you ask my wife that, she'll say it's her. She doesn't want to control everything. Right? <laughs> so the brain communicates with the body. And actually, they both communicate to each other. The brain talks to the body, and the body actually sends signals back to the brain. And how do they communicate? They communicate through blood, through nerves, and through energy. Now, when that's all working properly and they're communicating, that means that they produce function. When they produce function and everything's working perfectly, you have 100% normal function. You are in a state of ease, or homeostasis. Really, it's more allostasis, but anyway. Can we all agree though, when this is in this type of a picture, that's health. Can we all agree with that? Okay. So now, that, but the thing is though, that we don't see most people like this. We see most people having symptoms. Headaches, the normal headaches, you know, those types. The aches, the pains. The I'm hungry and I can't focus. I can't, I'm, I'm getting some snapping at the, at the slightest little thing. I'm, grasping at words. These are symptoms that we have. And when we have symptoms, what do we do? We try, that means that you're not in a state of ease, you're in a state of dis-ease. I just told you that a body that doesn't have any symptoms, but doesn't have symptoms, is a perfect state. So that means they're not in ease. That means they're not normal. They have loss of function. They actually have malfunction. And at this point, most people, what they try to do is what? They have pills and surgery that they're offered. But the funny thing about this is that the more pills you take, because if you look at this chart, it's only addressing the symptoms. It's not addressing any of the functions, any of the malfunctions. So now, you keep taking pills, that gets worse, and then you're given surgery instead. And in my financial and business terms, when you're offered surgery, that's basically like firing an entire department in your company for no reason. Okay? So what are the systems, though, that are causing these disruptions? It's stress, specifically distress, mental, emotional, physical, and chemical, and biochemical, bioenergetic. So instead of treating the symptoms, if we work instead at removing these distressors, like you guys are trying to do. Wait, Lewis, what are some like examples, I guess more sure. concrete examples of what those stressors are, the sure. expenses, I guess. Okay. Kind of so some of them are food, coffee, alcohol, exercise, walking with shoes on. So these are- These are all things Expenses that, or these are, these are revenues? These are all expenses. Because everything that you, all these things that I mentioned, both have a good side and a bad side. They have an expense to them. Coffee, in the wrong context, for some, if somebody doesn't have enough resources to deal with the bad stuff in the coffee, whether it's bulletproof or not, okay, they can't handle it. Okay? If their genetic blueprint doesn't have, allow them to be able to process caffeine properly, 
they've got problems. But if they have enough energy inside themselves, then they can make more. The same foods though, okay, let's go with food. Carbohydrates at the wrong time can actually rob and have more damage and more expenses, but it does provide some energy, but it's not as much. So it's a lower quality product. Whereas fats provide more energy per unit density and less damage overall. So just if, if you're asking me what expenses, pretty much everything that you do in exposure cells. The only true, absolutely true form of energy available to us is whatever gives you the most level of electrons without removing them or stealing them away. Okay. It's a little bit complicated, I know I'll, I'll, I'll get into more, but really, it, it, your question, it's really loaded because it's, everything has to be in context. And we'll get to this in a second, and you'll see why. Does that answer your question a little bit? Yeah. Does anybody else have any questions so far on any of this? No? Okay. So, so once again, so now we remove the symptoms, and instead we work on the functions, we get rid of the malfunctions, you return to a state of ease, and that means that now we remove the symptoms, and now you no longer need any of that, and you're back to 100% efficiency. So this, I go ahead. Question. Inflammation, yes. you hear it all the time, I've read it so much, but what does it really mean? Okay, <laughs> so inflammation. The, the other word that's synonymous with inflammation is oxidation. Okay. Have okay, you heard that before? No, I hear inflammation more frequently. Okay, so inflammation and oxidation, if you look in the research, they're kind of interchangeable. Oxidation from the physics world means removing of electrons. So if you're stripping electrons away from something, that's mm -hmm. oxidation. Okay. A, an example would be rusting of metal. Mm -hmm. okay. The thing is that with us, we have the ability to oxidize and reduce. Redu reduction means putting back electrons on the system. Okay, so it's reversing. Reversing reduction. Now, here's where context comes into play. Mm -hmm. Inflammation in of itself as a large umbrella term is not necessarily bad mm -hmm. because we use inflammation as a signaling system for our bodies. Chronic, elevated inflammation that your body cannot handle, that's bad, okay? But just the opposite, if you got rid of every bit of inflammation in your body and you never had any, you would also die, okay? Does that answer your question? Yeah. So that, because once again, this goes back to what is energy, what is expense, what is inflammation. Everything is different. It depends specifically on you, and this is why you need to test what's going on. And we'll get into this in a second. Do you have a question? No. Okay. So context, once again, the same business plan run into two different locations is gonna have different results. By that logic then, two different, the same DNA in two different locations is also gonna have different results. We know this from twin studies. They have two identical twins living completely apart. One of them develops cancer, the other one does not. Tell me again that cancer is a genetic disease. So you, at the same time, if you, depending on the environment you are in and you allow yourself to be exposed to, that will also alter your DNA. So you have to know what's going on inside of you. So, because what will work for somebody else may not work for you. So this is also why, why does, why is Jerry able to do this ketosis diet and for me it doesn't work? I thought it was supposed to be great for everyone. Why does paleo work for me and for somebody else it doesn't? Okay, everybody's completely different. There's a lot more going into it that you have to figure out. So, basically biohacking really means it's about challenging your beliefs. And the most important question that you can ask is, how do I know? How do I know? That's the most important question that you can ask. Charlie Munger, one of the best, one of the greatest business marketing minds, business management minds out there, said that what gets managed, gets managed, gets managed. And that's what we're doing. So some of the tools you can have, and actually why it's important, is because think about it. In business, we have analytics. We have also for sales tracking. We even know more about our cars and what's going on inside them than we do inside our own bodies. 
because we don't have those tools. What's the tool that we mainly use? How do I feel? Probably the most biggest metric that most people use is the scale they have in their bathroom. Okay? And if you just want to lose weight, guess what? I can chop off my arm and I can lose five pounds. But that's not necessarily the best way to do it. All right? So we need to know what's going on inside. You need to track your assets. So some of the tools available to you are things like EEG. You can actually see the brain waves. If anybody here is interested in meditation and focusing, well, your brain waves are the thing that helps you meditate and focus. So this device actually will tell you how those brain waves are actually working. So you can see them in real time and change them in real time. Heart rate, vari heart rate variability. This is the device that I've actually got here if anybody wants to play with it. This shows you how your heart is responding to stress and also allows you to change it so that way you respond better to stress. Another device is also the Polar Bluetooth Monitor. I've got this one here as well. That, this is another heart rate variability and also can be used to tell you whether or not you can deal with more stress now versus tomorrow versus yesterday. So this allows you to trend over time and see how well you're performing. So these are some tools that are really great, especially if you're doing your biohacks. Is the food that I'm eating allowing me to actually perform better? Is it changing my brain waves? Is the exercise, the meditation that I'm doing actually working? Am I actually able to stay in focus? So some other testing that's available, things like telomere testing. Has anybody heard of telomeres? Okay. Anybody not heard of telomeres? No? Okay, good. So you have telomere testing. For me, that's basically looking inside your bank account. This is the one thing that everybody should know. You have ketonics, keto sticks. This allows you to measure, using your breath, the level of ketones in your body. This shows how well fat adapted you are. You have a gut, uh, a gut perme intestinal permeability test. So this tells you how well the gut lining of your, of your stomach is actually doing, whether or not you're absorbing the nutrients that you're eating well enough. Wait, Louis, yes. can you explain why telomeres are looking inside your bank account? So, okay, with telomeres, what they are is, and the reason I didn't go further, but everybody said they, they heard of it, that's why. But telomeres basically are the end caps of the, of the DNA strands. So these are all packed inside chromosomes. The general analogy is the end of your shoelaces, but I prefer the analogy of the fuse on a bomb. But okay, the longer the fuse is, great. But if that fuse isn't lit, I don't care if it's long, I don't care if it's short. But when you light it, now I care whether or not I have a long fuse or not. The shorter the fuse, the faster the bomb goes off. Well, what happens here is, as the telomeres get shorter and shorter and shorter, once they are to there, the cell can no longer divide. Every time your cell divides, the telomeres get a little bit shorter. The more stress you are under, the faster those telomeres have to, uh, the faster the cells divide, which means the faster the telomeres shrink. So why is this important? Because once that gets down to zero, the cell can no longer divide. That means if it's sick, it becomes senescent, or it becomes a zombie cell, basically. It's still able to function, but it can't die. It can't replicate, it just stays inside you. So now it's creating more damage than actual than helping, because your body can't get rid of it. Okay? Does that answer your question? And then the final test that we have in there is the adrenal stress indicator test. So this actually measures cortisol and all the hormones to find out how well you're dealing with stress, how well you're sleeping, whether or not you're making melatonin at the right time. It's one of the reasons if anybody's wondering why I'm wearing these glasses, okay, because this helps manage and maintain and make sure that I'm making melatonin at night. Sorry, none of you are making melatonin right now. Okay. So these are things that you're able to start tracking. Oh, question. Go ahead. Um, these tests that you just showed us, yeah. are they all done with the doctor? Are there gadgets to conduct the tests with yourself? Sure. So great question. So some of these tests are available from the doctor. However, the way I think about most doctors is they're more about sick care than they are about health care. Uh, 
That's just, they're Does not that designed. Fall in line with preventive fine care? line. Huh? Does that fall in line with preventive care? Yeah, it, it's, it's a fine line because most of the stuff that they'll talk about, you got to remember, as far as science goes, in order before it gets into the medical realm, it takes about 25 years mm -hmm. from science, from the lab bench top to your doctor, it's about 25 years. Mm -hmm. The way I think about it is this. For the longest time, just now, are we finally learning that you cannot out diet your, you can't, so you cannot out exercise your way out of a bad diet. Okay, we just learned this now. It's finally, doctors are saying this. You have to make sure your diet is right. You can't just exercise. Okay? It took them 25 years to figure that out. Okay, it was a guy in Ansel Keys who kind of screwed all that up for us. It's going to take them another 25 years, if not longer, to figure out that. You cannot out-exercise or out-diet your way out of a bad environment. So all the testing that I'm talking about right here, they're going to tell you you don't need it. Unless you are so bad in the ground, about to die, yeah, then we'll take a look at these tests. Otherwise, if you're just looking to improve performance, insurance isn't designed to cover increasing performance. They're only designed if you're sick and or dying. Okay? You are known as subclinical. There's no code to put on the insurance form. So I'm sorry, they can't help. So this is where you either figure it out yourself or you come to somebody like myself who's a coach and works with you to interpret it because the other thing is this, going through all of these numbers, it's overwhelming. There's so much stuff that you have to go through to try to figure out these things. Because the other part that I'm, and David's learning it as well, and so is Mark to a certain extent, that all of the doctors and most of the science that's out there is only looking at biology. But there's a higher order before biology, and that's physics. And nobody's looking at the physics of how the bodies work. So a lot of the recommendations that people are doing, we don't know how this stuff's gonna react in 10, 15 years. So this is where we come in and we're experimenting with a lot of things. So some other tests that you've got, mediated release test. This is the test that allows you to figure out how well you react to certain foods, whether or not there's certain antibodies that are formed when your body gets exposed to these foods. Genetic testing, 23andMe. Has anybody done a 23andMe test? Okay. This is basically the business plan for your body. This tells you what goes on inside your body, how you're designed Work. But what I love about this at the same time is just like a business plan or an architect's plan for your house, if I don't want to have a bathroom over here but I want to have it over here, you can move it. If I don't want my business, although I had the plan like this, I'm going to change it and maybe bring in a new product, I can change that. You, your genetic blueprint is just that, a blueprint. How you express it is what really determines what you, what you actually do. And that's known as epigenetics. And that's one of the most fascinating things that's come out of that genome project. We thought that what? Once we knew the entire sequence of all the genes, we could just flip a switch and then we would be able to heal things. And that's not true. The epigenetics is what's really fascinating. But this at least will give you a blueprint. Microbiome testing. A gut bacteria, okay? You've got a whole other world going on inside you. We have more gut bacteria in our body than we even have human cells in us. So if these guys are not happy, you're not happy. If these guys are off, I've, I've seen people where um, if the lack of glucose may not be, it may just be because these guys over here are fighting and they want to have more of that sugar. It's not your brain, it's not because you're hungry, it's actually these guys in here who are talking to your brain. Because the brain and the gut actually connect to each other and they talk. And actually, you probably talked to Mark because he's done definitely the biome tests as well, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Then we also have the metabolic typing tests. There are different types of tests that it gives you a, uh, another way of looking at seeing which type of diet might work best for you. So rather than just trying different things, this is another thing you can do. So, what is the basic biohacking process that you should be going through for optimization? What you want to do is you want to figure out your baseline. 
where are you right now? Rather than just going haphazard and trying stuff, you may try half a dozen different things, but if you don't know where you started, you can't track it, you've got problems. Because we are really, really bad at recognizing changes over time. Okay, small changes over time. We're good at, oh, I hurt my arm, oh, that's a big change, I recognize that. But if your brain is focusing and working better, but you still see yourself as that angry person from before, usually it takes somebody else to tell you, hey, you're doing awesome, before you realize, oh, something has changed. Right? So tracking and getting that baseline, knowing where you are right now, very important. Identify that problem that needs to be fixed. And hopefully by now everybody's got that. Determine the requirements to solve that problem. So once again, looking at those systems, what is the thing that you want to focus on and what else is around it that could be causing that problem? Because the symptom that you're concerned with may not be where that problem's actually started. Determine the potential barriers to success. What could be stopping you? It could be not, not just what you're doing, but who you're doing it with. Okay, that's something else that we gotta think about. Who are we interacting with who's allowing us to potentially not do this? I know that I've seen many people like, oh, I wanna get better, I wanna get better, but nobody else in my family wants to help me. And then now you go backwards because you don't have that support. Next, take action. Once you've got all this stuff, actually go ahead and start doing it and basically rinse and repeat. Because I've noticed that once you get to this point and you start fixing these problems, you start finding other things that you want to fix. And basically have no limitation as a limitation. That should be the ultimate process. Figure out as good, how good do you want to feel? How amazing do you want to operate? Figure that out and get there. And that's about it, that's all I got. Okay, so I thank you. If anybody's got any questions, or we're just going to do a round table and discuss. That's great. Thank you. Nice, yeah. Yeah, I figured format, like if anyone has any questions for Lewis, otherwise, uh, we'll just go around, open discussion. Nothing really formal planned after that. Uh, so just go around each person, say like either something that you're interested in working on or a question you have about biohacking for the group. Um, so that was the thought. If anyone has any other ideas, definitely open to them. Nice. Okay, cool.